Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to continue our push dagger build that we started last week. We're starting out by doing the final grinding of these daggers. I'm starting my final grinding on a 128 grit belt from Broadbeck. This is one of their revolution belts. Then I'm going to move up to the game changers. Since everybody likes hand sanding, I figured I'd give you a little montage of all the hand sanding I had to do for these blades. First I start on the flats. Then I'm sanding the fullers. And more work on the fullers. And finally the bevels. Since the carbon fiber I selected for the handle material is only 8th inch, I decided to add double liners just to make it a little thicker. So here are the blades after being sanded to 400. Uh, I still got to put my maker's mark in them and then I'll do the final sanding uh, to 800. Now I'm going to move uh, just to hit the handle material so I can get this glued up so it's gl gluing while I'm doing the rest of the handle. So let's get that done. My one complaint about the red G10 liners from Jantz is they don't really show up against black. So uh, I want to get some brighter red. Now it's time to put my maker's mark on the blade. And this time I had enough room on the Ricasso, so it worked out great. Okay, I've got the blades all sanded to 800 grit. Um, you saw me put my maker's mark in there. Um, in this video, I'm going to take you through my entire etching process. You'll see exactly what I do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is wash these things um, with soap and water on both sides. So I'm going to leave this in the first time uh, for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to bring it out, wash off the oxides. Uh, notice I'm going to keep it wet before I put it in there. That's a tip I got from uh, Salem Straub. And in it goes. Uh, this this ferric chloride is about three to one with uh, ferric chloride to vinegar um, So it's going to go in there for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to scrub the oxides off and then it'll go back in and I'm going to do a bunch of cycles I want a pretty deep etch on this one Okay, we're going to pull this out now and uh, check it out Okay, it's looking pretty good All right, let's take the oxides off. First thing, I'm just going to neutralize it with some Windex. And I've got some 3,000, sorry, 2,000 grit sandpaper here. And I'm just going to take the oxides off and then we're going to put it back in. So now I'm going to leave it in for probably eight minutes and I'm going to do probably two, maybe three rounds of that. So the blades are on their final etching round and that round you don't want to clean off the oxides and now they're going to go into coffee. So here I'm going to just use pretty much a whole thing of coffee in this heated cylinder or container here. So what I'm going to do is just um, take the blades out, rinse them in water, and then immediately they're going to go into the coffee. So they'll stay in there for at least two to three hours, preferably five to six, 
and uh, we'll pull them out and they should be nice and black. Because I laid out all the handle profiles on one 10 inch piece of uh, carbon fiber, I really had to be careful cutting these out, so I ended up using a Dremel just to get around the edges. So these have been in the coffee for four or five hours. Now I'm going to pull them out um, and wash them off. What I'm going to do is just run these under cold water and then I'm immediately going to cover them in mineral oil and I'm going to let them hang. And that's a really important um, step. You don't want to touch them, you don't want to rub them. Um, just let the mineral oil do its thing. So here we are folks, um, coffee etch is all done. Uh, I've taped them up just to protect them, but you guys have kind of seen it already. Uh, now I'm just getting ready to do the, um, the handles. I want to drill the pins. Uh, I don't have a lot of space around these things because I tried to get them all into one um, 10 inch spot. So uh, I got to make sure that I got them all correct, which I think I do. So. We'll clamp these up, go drill the holes, and then we'll start to bevel the fronts. I wanted to put little beveled angles at the front of the scales uh, where they meet the ricasso just to match the same angle as the plunge lines. Here I'm doing final sanding on the areas that I won't be able to sand later once they're on the knife. Everything's clean with acetone, time for glue up. Now it's time to grind down the G10 pins so they're all nice and flat and then I'll be able to flip the grinder horizontally and do my profiles. Now on the small wheel I'll do the inside curves and then I actually bevel all of the angles around the handle and sand it but I'm not going to bother showing you guys all that. Now we're on to sharpening with the Wicked Edge Go. We'll put some nice fine edges on these. A little bit of stropping and now we're ready to cut some things up. Thanks for watching folks. I hope you enjoyed this push dagger build. 
I had a great time doing it. Remember, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.